Hey, this video is for my CIS 160 Introduction to Information Systems class here at Cochise College. And it is intended to uh, give you a little more guidance for Lab 4.1W using Nmap and Wireshark. Uh, really, hopefully, this just kind of provides some a uh, little extra context. So your um, understanding Nmap and how it works with Wireshark a uh, little better. Okay, so the first thing uh, you're going to do is you're going to look at um, Nmap and, and what it's capable of. So you'll type in the Nmap command and you're doing all of this in our virtual environment uh, using VirtualBox and you'll start uh, the Windows XP virtual machine, you'll run the nmap command, just a really simple uh, command. Uh, you'll type in uh, just nmap and then press enter and you'll look at what's available to you. I'll actually jump to um, you know an, an actual command line here. <coughs> So you'll see that I've typed in nmap. Uh, I've got a more recent version than we use in the labs. Uh, but just different options that are available, different sections, and how it kind of all breaks down. Okay, So these are just the different options that are available to you in nmap. Now let me actually jump ahead two slides here. These are the four commands that you'll be using in the lab. So the first thing you'll do is you'll do a ping scan. Uh, and the command associated with that, just nmap, and then uh, the sp switch, 192.168.100. Asterisk or star, and uh, that just means you know that you'll be pinging every host uh, that starts with 192.168.100, and uh, it will ping .0 to .255. Um, now, you'll then look at Wireshark and um, you know attempt to understand what Wireshark um, is telling you. And since the only two IP addresses in that range in our simulated environment end in .101 and .102, I want you to pay close attention to the .102 output and uh, see if you can determine you know how the dot 102 output is different from all of the other IP addresses that it is attempting to ping now the 102 output will be different um, and, and the scenario you know the hypothetical scenario here is that you've determined that 102 exists you've determined that uh, the output is different than 101 and your next step is to do a TCP port scan. And you'll do two versions of that port scan. And the lab, will, lab manual sort of explains the difference between the two. One is a, a stealth uh, scan. And that's the second one here. Uh, the second is um, you know, the ST command, which is a TCP port scan, which will um, you know, do do a little bit more than the stealth scan. You'll see a three-way handshake actually happening, um, I believe, on port 80. So those two scans, you know, are going to tell you which ports are open and which ports are closed. Um, and then you'll look at Wireshark, and it, it's going to be confusing. Wireshark output is confusing. If you were to run Wireshark on a normal network, you'll see. Uh, just line after line after line of different protocols, uh, different communication on a network uh, among all the hosts on a network. So it can be a little confusing. But what this lab attempts to do, and you will filter based on um, you know ports, for example. I, I think you filter based on port 80, of course, web traffic. And you'll actually see uh, the communication between these two hosts, your XP machine and the server, uh, .101 and .102, and, and hopefully it makes some sense in terms of the two of these hosts negotiating um, a, a session, you know, communicating um, back and forth. Okay, so that's the primary thing you'll be doing 
when you perform a TCP port scan. And then the last thing you'll do is just an operating system detection. In this case, I've given you ex an example here. I've, um, you know, scanned uh, uh, one of our web servers internally and determined that it's using Windows Server 2008 Service Pack 1 and that's important because there are known vulnerabilities for different operating systems and figuring out uh, which operating system is used on a particular server it can be valuable to us for that very reason. Okay, so these are the four Nmap commands that you'll use. You'll use them in conjunction with Wireshark. Wireshark will give you more information in terms of how computers communicate with one another, how all of that magic happens. And the Wireshark um, output will look, you know, very similar to this. Actually, this is actually taken on a production network. Uh, so you see a whole bunch of different protocols. Uh, we've got some ARP requests. We've got some Telnet traffic happening. We've got some UDP, some TCP um, packets over our network. So in a simulated environment, in our lab environment, you will not see all of this crazy stuff. You'll see um, you know, a bunch of ARP requests because you will be performing a ping scan on a range of IP addresses. Um, so hopefully this video has provided some context, uh, maybe a deeper level of understanding in terms of these two tools that you'll be using here in CIS 160. Okay, as always, email me, call me, text me uh, for further guidance. Other than that, good luck with the lab.